When building interpretations of sedimentary basins, it's useful to have an idea of the types of structures you might expect to find. And a useful approach is to apply the concept of regionals. Regionals are an interpretation tool. So what does this term mean? It's the long wavelength geometry of a horizon. And the term regional is shorthand for regional elevation and orientation. So on this seismic interpretation, we picked a green horizon through the data and the pecked blue line predicts where this horizon started. So it's the regional for the green. So you can think of the regional of where a particular horizon would be were it not for the local structures that we're interested in. And it will help us understand what the structure is here. So let's step back and look at a few simple cartoons. So here we have some strata ready to fault. In the top diagram, we push the hanging wall up creating a thrust fault, and in the lower one, we've done the opposite and moved the hanging wall down to create a normal fault. Let's draw in the regional for the top of the green horizon. So the act of thrusting is to move rocks above their regional, and the act of normal faulting is to do the opposite and drop rocks below their regional. Thrust belts make hills, normal faults make basins. So in deducing the structures, we want to look at the relationship of a horizon to where we think it should be if that local structure hadn't developed. Critically then, for the top diagram, in order to elevate the rocks above their regional, the fault that's doing the work must be inclined beneath that area that is above regional. Likewise, in the normal fault case, the normal fault must be inclined below the area that has been dropped below its regional. Well, let's look at an example of a thrust. Here we are from Deepwater Nigeria on a seismic profile. Let's add an interpretation of a horizon and we can forecast that away from the fold structure that we see, this horizon would have had this orientation. So this is the regional, the long wavelength behavior of this horizon, sub-horizontal. And the green horizon has been elevated above its regional. Therefore, we would deduce that the thrust which has accommodated this uplift will be inclined beneath the elevated part. Of course, we don't know whether the thrust lies on this side of the structure or that one. Though, given the data, it's more likely that the down to the right interpretation is the more plausible. Regionals need not be horizontal. We can explore this by looking at this cross-section through the Alberta foothills of the Canadian Cordillera and draw the region along for the top basement and also for the base of the tertiary here. And in both situations, these regionals are inclined gently down to the left. They're not horizontal. We can see we're preserved that when we take the base of the tertiary strata in towards the thrust belt, it's been uplifted above regional so much so that it's been eroded away. So we're dealing with thrusts. Let's go back to the seismic example we started this presentation with, which actually comes from offshore Tunisia. Let's draw back on our green horizon through there, and it's regional, and we can see that the green horizon has been dropped below its regional in the fashion picked out by these yellow arrows. So therefore we would forecast that the structural style here involves normal faulting. Let's zoom in on here. We can see that behavior perhaps rather more clearly. And we could interpret a series of normal faults dropping below the more downthrown parts of the green horizon. Now, for this exercise, it's greatly enhanced if we use long sections such as the version we've got on screen at the moment. If we were to zoom in, we can illustrate a problem here. Let's put the green horizon on. And if we just look at this profile, we might construct the regional like this. So some parts of the green horizon have gone down relative to their regional and other parts up. This segment is above its regional. We might be tempted to suggest that this is a contractional fault related structure. But generally, 
the green horizon has gone down below its regional. I think on balance, therefore, you can make an interpretation something like this, where the units that are down thrown are in the hanging water normal force. So as Smith emphasised it again, it's worth using the longer sections you can get hold of, the longer the better, to characterise the long wavelength pattern for a horizon, the better to construct its regional. Well, let's move to another cross section. This one comes from Southeast Asia. We've got pink basement rocks and then some sedimentary cover in the various colours on top. We can pick the top basement. And if we do that, we can see that the regional runs across the section. And in general, the top of the basement has been dropped below its regional. Let's put on another regional, this time for the base of the MOVE unit. And we can see that in places along this profile, the base of the MOVE unit has been lift, uplifted above its regional. We can interpret this as inferring that the faults have got a polyphase history, that they are reactivated normal faults. Let's zoom in on one of the structures. And we can illustrate this quite clearly here. The top of the basement has been downthrown net below its regional, and the base of the MOVE unit is elevated above its regional. So presumably the structure started off as an entirely a normal fault with a small basin package developed in its hanging wall and then it's partly been reactivated as a thrust, uplifting the MOVE unit but still retaining the top basement in net extension. Now we can also use the concept of regionals to understand folding. So you might infer that a buckle fold, such as on the left hand side diagram here, involves the antiform going up and the sinform going down. We might be tempted to construct a regional like this for the base of the orange horizon. However, this is misleading. Let's consider this section in here. These cartoons were drawn from an analog experiment. If we rehang our diagrams from Y, this would be a better reference point from which to make our analysis. In fact, the sinforms and the antiforms have been jacked up. Now let's explore this idea using another result from an analogue experiment here, which is a tracing of a sandbox model showing some folded horizons. Let's put in the regional for the base of the blue. And we can see that the sinforms are lying more or less still at regional and the antiforms have been elevated away from it. So in general, it's worth hanging your regional from the base of the sinforms. But there are exceptions to this. So let's look at the result of another analog experiment. But in this case, the model was built on a thick, very weak layer that was able to flow. So as the contraction was imposed upon the model, the sinforms were evacuated and material flowed into the cores of the antiforms. So if we construct the regional for that, we can see that the sinforms have subsided below their regional. As a consequence, the sinforms have been able to accumulate sin kinematic strata, creating these so-called down-building fills. But regionals have very rarely been applied to understand fold belts. So overall then, regionals are great tools for interpreting the structural style in sedimentary basins. We're asking the question, where would a particular horizon be if there was no local structure? We're comparing the local structure with the long wavelength behaviour of that horizon across a sedimentary basin.